culture and culinary English. 5.1 Poetry and culinary English. This unit aims to demonstrate how to read poetry intensively and look for the culinary words in poems. Intensive reading is to read a text intensively by looking up every word, phrase, or collocation that you want to learn in order to understand the meaning of the text. In this video, the aim is to look up culinary words in points for learning English for specific purpose. The specific purpose is to learn culinary words such as names of fruits. John Keats wrote a poem which is to autumn. This poem was published in 1819. It contains some fruit names and words for describing fruits. John Keats was an English romantic poet. He was born in 1795 and died in 1821. Firstly, let me read aloud the entire poem and highlight the fruit names and words for describing fruits in yellow. To Autumn The first stanza of this poem is full of fruit names and the words for describing fruits. Season of mists and a mellow fruitfulness. Close, bosom friend of the maturing song. Conspiring with him how to load and bless With flute the vines that round the thatch eaves from To bend with apples the most cottage trees And the field all fruit with roughness to the core To swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells With a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has overbrimmed their claiming sails Thomas Campion was an English poet and composer he was born in 1567 and died in 1620 he wrote a lyric poem Cherry Ripe, which was published in a collection entitled The Third and Fourth Book of Ayers in 1670 by the London firm of Thomas Snowden. In the poem Cherry Ripe, you can find fruit names. I mark them in yellow. The following is the first stanza. Cherry Ripe there is a garden in her face where roses and white lilies blow. A heavenly paradise is that place where in all pleasant fruits do flow. There cherries grow which none may buy till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Robert Frost was an American poet. In 1874, he was born in San Francisco. He died in 1963. He won four Pulitzer Prizes and became the most famous poet of his time. His poem, After Apple Picking, depicts the process of picking apples and the byproduct of apples. The culinary words are marked in yellow in this poem. After apple picking, my long pointed leathers sticking through a tree, toward heaven still, and there's a barrel that I didn't fill. Beside it, and there may be two or three apples I didn't pick upon some bough. But I'm done with apple picking now. Essence of winter sleep is on the night. 
the scent of apples. I'm drowsing off. I cannot rub the strangeness from my sight. I got from looking through a pane of glass. I skimmed this morning from the drinking trough and held against the world of hoary grass. It melted, and I let it fall and break. But I was well upon my way to sleep before it fell, and I could tell what form my dreaming was about to take. Magnified apples appear and disappear, stand end and blossom end, and every flag of Rosset showing clear. My instep arch not only keeps the egg, it keeps the pressure of a ladder round. I feel the ladder's way as the bells bend, and I keep hearing from the cellar beam the rumbling sound of load on load of apples coming in. For I have had too much of apple picking. I'm overtired of the great harvest I myself desired. There were ten thousand thousand fruit to touch, cherish in hand, lift down and not let fall. For all that struck the earth, no matter if not bruised. Over spiked with stubble, when surely to the cider apple keep, as of no worse. One can see what will trouble this sleep of mine, whatever sleep it is, were he not gone. The woodchuck could say whether it's like his long sleep, as I describe, is coming on. Or just some human sleep. In this poem, "bruised" and "spiked" are adjectives, which are used to describe the conditions of apple skins. The cider apple is the byproduct of apples.